Okay, it's about two minutes after six. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking time out of your evening to uh, uh, participate in our guest speaker series. My name is Monica Remy. I am your tech employer specialist in northern Kentucky and greater Cincinnati. I've got just a few housekeeping notes and announcements before we get started, and I turn, turn everything over to Ken. Uh, there will be no guest speaker next week. We are off for Memorial Day. I hope you enjoy your weekend. And we will pick back up with speakers on Monday, June 3rd, and we have speakers on June 3rd, 10th, and 17th. Please keep an eye on the announcements Slack channel for further information. Uh, <clears throat> if you are attending this as part of your career readiness requirement, please remember to fill out your Google form in your Google Classroom to make sure that you do get credit for attending. Uh, additionally, please keep yourself muted, muted throughout the presentation. You are encouraged and welcome to use uh, the chat feature for questions and comments. <clears throat> we should also have time at the end for a little bit of Q&A. Um, tonight, we are joined by Ken Baum with Engage Partners, who is going to talk with us about mentoring. Take it away, Ken. Thanks, Monica. Appreciate it. Um, first of all, Reed, do I know you? I think you've seen me a few times at the um, C3 at events. C3? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, knew, I, I thought I had. Okay. I'm surprised you recognized me. I'm very flattered. <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, you know, because especially since you know how it, at the meetups, how bad I am with names. I forget everybody's name, but yeah. Anyway, welcome. Um, Thank you. As uh, Monica said, I'm Ken Baum. I'm uh, a senior managing consultant at Engage Partners, uh, currently a Java developer. Uh, and also, uh, I don't have any uh, apprentices right now. I may be getting one before the end of the year, but in, over the past four years, I've uh, uh, mentored over a, a dozen apprentices. Uh, and so I have. Uh, and, and interviewed probably a hundred, so uh, so I've picked up a few things along the way. Uh, besides, you might have noticed that I'm older than dirt, so I have a lot of experience to uh, to uh, with helping people, uh, which is pretty much my passion. I I graduate or graduated. I I retired from the Air Force in 1992, and then I've been programming ever since. So you can you can take a guess at how old I am. Uh, but that doesn't matter. I'm just, just well-seasoned. Um, so tonight I want to talk about, um, this. A mentor is a terrible thing to waste. All right. So, uh, what what's what's uh, inspired this talk was a few weeks ago. Um, I was having a discussion with our director of purpose at Engage, and uh, she was uh, relating a story about a, a a young lady at the University of Cincinnati that she's mentoring, just as a sort of a life mentor kind of situation. And she was frustrated because um, a lot of times when uh, she would talk to the to the young lady, her you know how are you doing? Fine. Uh, you have any problems? No. Um, you know, and, and and it's it was frustrating her because she felt you know she wanted to invest in this girl's life and and she felt underused. Then she come to find out this this girl had been struggling with some things that that Elena could have helped her with, um, and again, you know, of course that's her business, but uh, as as new newly minted software developers uh, or whatever whatever track you're on, um, you you uh, it, it behooves you to not waste uh, this uh, when you have a mentor now. Let me caveat that a little bit. Mentors are not just for junior programmers. Everybody should have a mentor. I've got a mentor. I've got many mentors. Um, and I've had many mentors over the years. But 
at this this type of your time of your career it's just very uh it's just you just have this very um you know you have a, a unique opportunity uh and this is our agenda having a mentor is a unique opportunity i'm going to go into some reasons why you would waste the opportunity if, you know why what does that mean and then some suggestions on how you might better use your mentor not you know better use the time you have with your mentor uh it takes some effort so you have this this unique opportunity okay and i asked uh chat gpt what what draw me a picture of a unique opportunity what what represents a unique opportunity to to ai okay so this is the this is the picture it came up with which is just absolute cheese but it's beautiful it's a beautiful picture it's an amazing picture and uh you know it's just uh you have this opportunity you you have this beautiful uh future ahead of you uh take advantage of it take advantage of it um one reason is that you're in a no judgment zone you're not expected to know everything I know you want to know everything and you want to impress everybody with how much you know and you want to you want to make sure that the people don't have to hold your hand and yada 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 um get over that get over that you're you don't know what you're doing and everybody knows it and everybody expects you to just learn they expect you to fall down uh, so you're you, it's a great opportunity great opportunity uh because of because you're in a no judgment zone it's like being in heaven okay no judgment you're sitting around everything is doves and sun, sunshine and and everybody's just has no fear of sharing anything okay that's the kind of situation you're in now as you get old you know older and more experienced uh yeah you you still have a lot of leeway but people expect you to know some things some basic things right now you're not in that position uh i don't even know why i put this picture in here other than chat gpt is really weird but it, it's just what a horrible picture i thought i'd make your day um that was a judgment zone by the way okay uh you'll receive honest feedback um feedback i don't know if you've ever given any thought uh, these are the kind of things that i think of when i'm just sitting there trying to go to sleep at night you know feedback where would we be without feedback we would be dead without feedback we would not realize that the truck's coming and step out in front of it we would uh we would not realize the stove is hot and burn ourselves that's all feedback um we but for some reason when it comes to our professional lives we think uh we we disregard feedback a lot we don't take we don't take it to heart uh you're going to get honest feedback from your mentor and from the people you work with whatever team you're on um it's it's a you know it's just it's just an amazing thing uh because you need to you need to listen to it and, and learn from it uh again that's just a chat gpt picture of a cockpit of some plane um you know can't you can't imagine a, a pilot flying a plane without some feedback okay i think it's been tried before and without without a good result so when you have your uh when you have your mentor a mentor uh whoever whoever it might be wherever you might be um you know, make sure that you give them that that they give you feedback we'll get into that a little later uh you'll have access to your mentors network uh if your mentor has been around a while uh they've they've made some friends especially in the cincinnati area if you're still going to stay here um you know it's a small development community in cincinnati you think for for a big town it you know it, it's amazing how many times you run into people you used to work with and uh take advantage of, of their network when 
uh, you'll you'll read the statistics on it. Most jobs are found through through networking, and I know networking may you, it may sound like, oh, that's terrible. I hate networking. No, you don't. You love networking. You love talking to people. When you get together as a class, you talk to each other. You're always sharing stories and things. That's all networking is. It's when you go in to networking with an agenda and, and feel pressure to to come out with with somebody's business card or ha giving them your resume. You well, know, forget that. Just just talk to people. Just talk to people. All right. Um, you'll develop soft skills. I know that uh, they're probably uh, in, in your boot camp. They're probably going over some of that. Um, you know, it's we uh, developers have a pretty uh, bad reputation for not having soft skills. So everybody's always talking about it. But, um, you know, because we're all introverts. Right. But if you've ever been to a meetup afterwards where everybody you can't get them out the door because they're they're all talking to each other. Uh, at least that's our experience at C3. Um, you know, you will develop that. You will develop that over time. And it's it's and it's the time to do it. Um, and you'll be in a place of emotional safety. What do I mean by that? I mean that you'll you'll be in a place where you can share your opinions on things and not not be a uh, not feel stupid. Now, maybe you're going to feel stupid anyway. Some people, you know, whenever you share something that's wrong, it you feel kind of dumb. But uh, you'll you'll be in a place, and this is, comes out from being in a no judgment zone. You'll be in a place of emotional safety. You you can you can share your your opinions, and you can make suggestions. Uh, I love it when my apprentices make suggestions. Uh, you know, one of the things we try to get our apprentices to do is speak up, speak up. Don't when you're in a meeting, speak up. Except this one, you're muted. OK. Why would you waste this opportunity? What are the things that that cause us to uh, uh, to not maybe not use our, our mentors as much as we can't could? Um, Again, we're we're afraid of fear, uh, appearing incompetent. Uh, like I said before, we know you are. You know that's not that's not an issue here. Um, we know that that you're learning, uh, and that we don't expect you to be able to uh, to do the job completely. That's why you we're mentoring you. you know, that's why that's why you're we're we're doing this. Um, Inadequate preparation. Now, this is this is more on you. The more you prepare for meetings, the more you prepare for discussions with your mentor, um, the better you're going to feel, and the more likely you are going to be able to bring something up that maybe you would have hesitated to bring up before. Like you know, you maybe you maybe you did a thing. It was a bad thing. You know, like checking uh checking passwords into github or something like that you know that's okay own up to it but you'll if you're if you're prepared for those things then, then you're more likely to do it mismatch goals means it's more of a mentor uh mentee match uh, kind of thing what are the you need to discuss what your goals are now maybe if you're working with someone at a company your goal is to be a productive member of the team, okay? But you may have a mentor that has, you know, outside the company, and you may have other goals. You may say, I just want to learn. Uh, I need to, to, to be better at, uh, excuse me, at, at uh, React or something like that or some, some part of React or, or JavaScript uh, async, async await. How does that work? Um, and the, the make sure that your goals are in alignment with what the um, mentor has uh, in mind for you. Imposter syndrome. We already touched on this somewhat. Uh, once you get once you realize that everyone's an imposter, it, it really does take the pressure off. But uh, but 
I know many times you you will think, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this, but I've got to pretend that I do know. You know, uh, as as a junior programmer, as a as an apprentice working with a mentor, that pressure's gone. Okay. Um, limited initiative. Well, uh, I I hesitated to even put this on here because. First of all, if you've got limited initiative, you probably aren't in this boot camp. But uh, it's I still have seen it happen with with some uh, some apprentices I've had that they're they're a little uh, you know they usually limited initiative is a symptom of something else like imposter syndrome or um, fear of appearing incompetent, something like that. Okay, so how do I use my mentor? Good question. I'm glad you asked. First of all, show up. Okay, this this can be metaphorically show up, physically show up. Uh, we've had men, we've had apprentices that, uh, you know, they uh, they ask, well, when is uh, when do people get into the office? This is before COVID, but more and more places are going back to the office now so you may run into that um when do people come into the office oh i mean they come in nine ten o'clock or something like that you come in at eight you're an apprentice you come in at eight or when whenever your mentor gets there uh, when there's a when there's a meeting you don't you don't slack and say oh, sorry i've got something else no you don't have anything else you've got this you're an apprentice uh that will impress people you know eventually that'll relax and by eventually i mean within a, you know one or two months if they see how hard working you are uh, at least that's how it's worked in my experience um but show up be present okay so when you're when you're in a meeting um you're not on your phone okay you're not you're not multitasking this is uh this is again a gem from chat gpt showing uh everybody's on their laptop uh, engaged in the meeting uh, a couple of people are sitting there looking at their phones um, that's not you that's not you um, now i'm going to give you the number one you know in number one way especially in, in with remote work the number one way to um to to be engaged and that is turn on your camera okay now some co some companies they don't turn on their cameras during meetings some companies do and there are people that will sit there with their camera off and uh and um you know as an apprentice you want to make sure people know that you're you're there you're engaged um, so turn on your camera if you can. Now I apologize for this graphic. Uh, again, I, I it, it's really a, a completely comical situation with ChatGP3 trying to get Chat to just do text. It was hilarious. Okay, so this is the closest I could get, even though it's got these cat whisker things and this little semicircle thing, whatever that is, um, on there anyway there it is I, I thought about going through the whole process but it would it, it would take a little while but it was hilarious okay how do i use my mentor listen okay learn to listen i'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because that's just one of the the basic um uh, things of of soft skills listening that you listen more than you talk um i know you've got lots of things to share you you've got knowledge just falling out of your ears uh, from all the things you've learned. Um, and when you see something in a meeting that uh, um, that you recognize, um, you want to you want to share. And so you have, like I say, you need to speak up, but you need to listen. It's, it's going to be kind of a tightrope. Ask questions. Um, nothing 
nothing makes me happier than when people ask questions. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't know the answer. You may be just sort of moving the, the conversation along a little bit by asking a salient question to make to get people to to think that that's the to me that's that's a real skill um that uh, you know is bet is works much better than just telling people what the answer is ask questions and then seek feedback we talked about feedback before um ask your mentor how am i doing um how how's this code look um if your mentor is good you've already you're already getting feedback but if you're not getting the feedback you want or if you have something that you're you're not sure about and you need the feedback ask try to get try to get it uh get there's nothing there's nothing worse than going off and doing something and spending a lot of time on it and coming back and showing it to people and, and they look at you like why did you do that <laughs> you know that's not what we wanted you to do uh well uh if you get if you get constant feedback then that you can correct that situation by the way that never goes away <laughs> still happens all the time okay seek feedback and then just step up when i uh, when i joined the air force the the number one piece of advice everybody gave me going in was never volunteer for anything okay so that was and that that uh that was good advice was good advice however comma uh this is not the air force this is not the military um if if they need if the team needs some documentation written i know nobody wants to do documentation volunteer to do it if uh, you'll you, you'll know when when it's time to volunteer because there'll be this long awkward silence in the meeting and no one saying a word and the scrum master saying anybody want to do this team team bueller bueller i mean it's it's really it it's really painful <clears throat> step up uh write the documentation right or, or whatever it is that they need create the stories um take the story test the story a lot of times they need people to test things because they don't, nobody has enough QA. So just step up. And do the work. That seems obvious. But I like stating the obvious. It's one of my gifts. Um, do the work. I want to see when I, one of the things I tell my apprentices on the first day is i want to see your hands on the keyboard you you just walked in the door you don't know anything about this i want to see your hands on the keyboard i want to see you doing stuff um i want this creepy situation okay everybody's hands on the keyboard uh i've had apprentices that uh were afraid to again because of um imposter syndrome or being you know just being afraid um get over that as much as you can and if you can't get over it talk to your mentor about it um it's it's you you're being hired to do a job and eventually eventually you've got to actually do the job and uh you know it's just important you know again I, I hate having to emphasize it but i've run into it several times with my own apprentices where they're reticent to actually uh, do anything not do anything but do do the work that they that they've been asked um so put your hands on the keyboard that's that's a good place for them to be okay well i've just talked nonstop for 25 minutes here almost do we have any questions so we can we can make this a mentoring session now if you if you have questions if you need to uh if you have any questions about mentoring about being an apprentice about engaged partners about
chat GPT's abysmal ability to generate images, um, at least text. I see the see the any questions there. It's got a little two S's overlapped. Yeah, that that was a that was a process. <laughs> that was a process. That took a while. Anyway, so feel free to uh, uh, either put something in the chat or just uh, you can unmute and talk to us. I don't think Monica's keeping you muted, right? What would your recommendations be in finding a mentor? Okay, so if you're uh, if you haven't found work yet, when when you graduate, hopefully you'll be able to find work pretty quickly. Uh, your a natural choice for mentor would be someone at your job. Um, now, a uh, Engage Partners hires apprentices, but right now there's not many companies that are doing it. So we're we're kind of in a lull right now. Uh, for several years, uh, we, you know, I was at one time I had four apprentices at the same time, two just starting and two just finishing. But um, outside of that, I would attend. Um, I would attend meetups and try to find some people that um, that um, you enjoy talking to. You know, just find some people to talk to, informal mentors. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot of meetups in town. Um, the one that I run at Engage is called Codecraft Community. Um, there's uh, there's the .NET uh, user group that meets at Tech Elevator in in Norwood. Uh, there's a Java JavaScript all all kinds. There's a drink up meetup that just meets at a bar somewhere, and you just drink and network, um, pretty much in that order. Um, so. Uh, find you know try to find uh, you know who do you know that that is in tech maybe someone that inspired you to go to code kentucky uh maybe someone in your family that that's in tech i don't know uh, you, you be again this is part of the soft skills being forward asking people because people aren't in general People aren't going to just walk up to you and say, you know, God told me you need a mentor. Um, I'm going to be your mentor. Of course, your response is going to be, he hasn't said a word to me about it. But uh, but I'm, all I'm, that's all I'm saying is find somebody like that. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about Engage. Yeah. Monica said, watch your regional Slack channels for networking opportunities and uh you know if you go to a, net, a networking opportunity uh, you don't necessarily have to feel pressure to, to find a job just meet some people and meet somebody that you know, is really into the tech and that, that might be willing to uh you know that, that you hit it off with and might be willing to uh to mentor you engage partners has been around for uh, since 2011, so it's about 12 years now, 13 years. Um, they uh, they were founded by uh, uh, Michael Krager and Kelly Dolan, um, who they were in uh, the IT space, uh, more account management in the IT space uh, previously, but they were dissatisfied with the the way that capitalism was shaking out in general and especially with consulting companies so they wanted to find a consulting company that could use consulting as a force for good so part of the you know baked into the dna of engage is service to the community service to the planet service to other people uh taking care of your people taking care of your client uh they call it the triple bottom line you've that wasn't their term. They that's been around a while, but people, planet, and profit. 
Okay. Um, so uh, we're very much, um, you know, we we have mostly software development. Uh, we have QA. We have uh, user experience people. We have agilists, scrum masters. So and it's all and it's all consulting for for other companies. So um, when we when we started the uh, the apprentice model uh, in 2019, it was me and me and a guy named Matt Brewer were the uh, were building it. Um, we uh, we had this model, and we still have this model of we place a senior consultant in a company with one or two apprentices, and the, the thought is that after a year. They'll be engaged employees for a year, but after a year, that company, uh, you know, we're developing talent for that company, and they're going to hire them. Um, uh, currently, I'm at GE. Uh, they've hired a few. Like uh, we have a bunch that they're they're wanting to hire, but uh, they haven't been able to yet. So uh, it's worked out pretty well with their them. Uh, but like I say, with the market, that that's kind of dried up. <coughs> the most important transferable soft skill people bring into tech from other industries. Um, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I mean, other industries, I mean, other industries have all the soft skills. We have none, but um, not really. <laughs> but um, I would I would think I would say that, uh, um, you know, if, if you're the, the most important thing you can do is for soft skills is just be genuinely interested in people. When you're dealing with someone whether it's in an interview or trying to trying to network, uh, trying to find a job, um, treat people like human beings, be, be good to them, be kind, and uh, be genuinely interested in them. It's, as, uh, you know, Dale Carnegie used to say, you know, people never get tired of hearing their name and they never get tired of talking about themselves. Um, that's gonna. That's hard. Kind of hard in an interview because you have to talk about yourself. But uh, if you're dealing with people, uh, that's you know, the the worst thing you can do is is try to. Here, here's the here's the killer at, at at Engage. I'll I'll give you a little secret. If you ever if you ever interview at Engage, if we if we get a whiff of narcissism, you're 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 out. We don't. We don't we don't do narcissists, um, and we've we've had a couple of them surreptitiously sneak in, and they didn't last long because we don't. Not that we didn't treat them well, but but they they're not going to feel comfortable around us because it's not all about you know trying to impress people or, or climb over people for for uh, promotions and things like that. Uh, we we collaborate. We try to try to help each other we try to help the client so that's what we value and when we and we live by that it's not just it's just not hype it's not just hype it's not just talk any other questions three yeah so this is a, a curious Sorry, was that some feedback right there? Did you hear that? Or is that just me? Is that me? Should I keep going? Yeah, go. Okay. Gotcha. Um, this is a curiosity question. Um, you know, in this day and age where we're kind of working in between remote workplaces and hybrid environments, um, have you noticed that having any sort of a positive or negative effect on you know mentorship overall? I mean, we talked about 
um, you know, the importance, if you're in a meeting, for instance, of having a camera on, how that can really help to make sure people know that you're there. But um, I was just curious if you've noticed any difficulties brought about by that shift in the workplace. I have, uh, I've had uh, uh, apprentices where it was 100% on site. I've had some that were hybrid and I've had some that were completely remote. Um, and I, I haven't noticed, we've been able to do pretty well. I'm, I'm, I still have a, and maybe this is just a prejudice in my mind uh, for in person, talking to people, uh, being able to look over the shoulder um, or talk about stuff. Um, but it's it's not, uh, I don't think it's a, it's an insurmountable barrier, uh, the remote uh, mentoring. Uh, I think there's some advantages uh, to in-person that, that, you know, from a personal person to person kind of contact um, where I prefer that. But I just because I prefer it, I don't I'm not sure I'm not willing to say that that's that's better. You know, it just it's it's where I'm more comfortable. Um, so uh, I wouldn't shy away from it if that's if that's if you have an opportunity to uh, to be mentored remotely, I would go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's um it's just like you said, being able to have somebody look over your shoulder, it's so much easier, I bet, than, you know, having to send over a block of code or schedule a Teams call or something like that. So that's why I was curious yeah. about that. Yeah, I, I, there, there's definite definite advantages. But, you know, the, uh, the, the end game for a mentor with the mentee is uh, you don't need me anymore. So your interaction is over time is going to going to dwindle, going to going to be less. Um, and you know, that's a good thing. Uh, it makes me, it makes me feel like a parent with, with, when kids leave the house, you know, it's like very sad, but, uh, you're, you're very proud. You make me very proud. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, 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 I think, I think, uh, I think that in person better, but, but still don't try away from the remote because uh mentorship is just um you know just you need it every we all need it we all need it absolutely thank you very much where should we be looking in this tight market um the um Best I can tell you is uh, persistence. Okay, you should be looking everywhere. <laughs> um, the um, there's a there's a book um, that I had a long time ago. It's still out, but it's "What Color Is Your Parachute?" It's about job hu job hunting. Uh, and it was written back, I mean, I think the first edition came out in the late 70s or something like that. It's still around. Uh, but on the opening page, it says, your, your job hunt consists of, and it has 100 no's and then one yes. <laughs> you know, you don't, you, you know, once you get a yes, you don't even th remember the all the no's you got. Um, so it's just a matter of persistence. Uh, that's why I say, um, you know, make yourself as attractive to employers as you can, which means, you know, you're you're networking, you're uh, you, you're you know, you're talking to people, you're, uh, you know, it, it's good to have things out on GitHub. <clears throat> you know, if you can do something like leak code or something like that, to uh, I, I'd be doing that anyway, just to keep your skills sharp. Once once you're out of boot camp, that is, when you have a little time. Um, so keep, you know, keep your keep your skills sharp, uh, but you just have to, uh, you know, 
metaphorically pound the pavement. You got to send out a lot of resumes. You got to apply to a lot of places on LinkedIn, uh, whatever, whatever it takes. I mean, it's just like, like, like Monica says, it's, it is a, a really tight market right now. Um, uh, it's it seems to be loosening up a little bit at least i think it is but uh um but but still it's 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 very difficult i think after covid whenever when everybody was hiring everybody it, it just we got lulled into this this sense of oh wow this is this is a, a bull market and it's never going to go away <laughs> ah, wrong yeah um Slack, uh, probably not. LinkedIn is probably a better place to network uh, for jobs, plus some of the other job sites like Indeed and, and uh, you know, there are others out there. Um, you might, uh, there are uh, companies, recruiting companies, uh, placement companies that uh, I've always, um, had good luck with with pl places like um, Brooksource and um, no, there's can't think of any. Oh, uh, I've even gone with Robert Half. I wouldn't necessarily recommend Robert Half, but if you need a job, you need a job. I mean, that's um, so some of these some of these placement firms you might you might try those. Um, are there positive things you should look for in a mentor and what are some of the negative traits you would avoid? Well, I've already mentioned, have I mentioned narcissism? <laughs> uh, I mentioned that. Um, the, uh, oh, Glassdoor, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing around. Yeah, Glassdoor is another place that you can look. Um, but look for somebody that, uh, that you sort of, uh, you know click with a little bit you know personality wise uh, they may be the smartest person in the room uh but if 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 they're kind of surly or you know you know not pleasant to be with yeah you might learn you'll you'll learn stuff from them but it won't be you won't have a good time um find somebody that you can click with so i'm find somebody that uh is really interested in doing it i mean that's just that that's the important thing uh with me if if i find somebody that, that's interested in being mentored that's like you know that's like blood in the water for a shark i mean that's i i thrive on that i, I love helping and, and mentoring people um to a fault i mean people get sick at work people get sick of hearing me you know is everything a teachable moment with you i mean that's it's uh it's look for somebody that that is interested in, in helping um and sometimes that's hard to do and it might take more than one conversation you know i met him at drink up after he had a couple of drinks and he seemed a real nice guy but when he sobered up it wasn't so hot so yeah um yeah i guess i guess they were talking about your slack channels so they may be a a great place to network for you guys um i, I didn't really realize what what he was talking about there so my apologies any other questions Okay. Well, All right. thank you so much for joining us today, Ken. We really appreciate it. Some great information yep. about mentors and interacting with mentors and how to get them and how to find them. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. Um, this is being recorded. So if you need to go back uh, to re-listen to part of this, it will be available in the next couple of days. And Ken, I'll send you a copy of this as well. Uh, if okay. you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me, Monica Remy. I am your tech employer specialist for Northern Kentucky and Greater Cincinnati. And if I can't help you, I can direct you to the person who can.
So again, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Um, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend coming up. And uh, don't forget, no meeting um, next Monday, and we will be back June 3rd. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.